RetroArch is an incredible collection of emulators that you can use on your Amazon Fire TV or Android-based TV. I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take to get it set up and running on your own display. And it's all coming up next. If you like original video content on restoring, repairing, and modding consoles and other great video game content, click the subscribe button now so you don't miss out on great new videos as they're published to the channel. Thanks so much! Hi, my name is Blaine if you're new here, and I'm going to show you how to get RetroArch running on your Amazon Fire TV. You can also use this on an Amazon Fire Stick or an Amazon Fire Cube. There are two things you absolutely need, and then one I certainly recommend. You're going to need your TV's remote control in order to get to the menu systems and download some things you need. You're going to need a USB stick formatted in FAT32 format for the TV to be able to read it. Most TVs have a USB 2.0 port. And I'd really recommend that you get a controller, a gaming controller, to play the games on your TV. This is a Steel Series, which is Bluetooth compatible, but you could also use a PlayStation 4 Xbox One controller. If you're going to use a Fire Stick or a Fire Cube, I would recommend that you get a multi-port adapter to plug into the USB port on your TV. This will let you sideload games and use the Fire TV Stick without having to use the native memory on the Fire TV Stick to get your ROMs loaded up. This is a Tocita brand one, and I'll link it in the description down below. But let me also mention, you might need micro USB to USB-A adapters to fit your TV. Check that stuff carefully when you're ordering. To get started, go to the RetroArch website, linked in the description below, and click the Download tab. Scroll down until you see the green Android robot. These icons are inordinately large because I'm using Parallels for Mac, which lets you run Windows on a Mac. When you get to Android, if you have a device that can access the Google Play Store, you can download RetroArch right from there. But in this case, we're going to sideload it. So click the download link underneath the Google Play. Now here's the thing, don't get the 32-bit or 64-bit versions, just get the straight up download version. It's actually a pretty quick download. This is well-established software and completely safe. It's going to pass Windows security test. Now that it's downloaded and scanned, you're going to need some content in the form of ROMs in order to play some games. The easiest way to find this stuff is just go to Google. What you're going to need are called No Intro ROMs, specifically No Intro ROMs to run here. For our purposes, I'm going to use Atari 2600 ROMs. At this point, you've downloaded everything that you're going to need from the internet. So go ahead and close out your browser and open up File Explorer. You'll need to transfer some files around to get them on the USB stick in the right places. Grab that RetroArch.apk file and copy it. Then go over to the USB stick and on the APK folder, paste it right in there. With the APK transferred over, go back to the Downloads folder, or wherever you saved those files you downloaded, and uncompress the Atari 2600 game folder, the compressed folder. The cleanest way to manage these file structures and folder structures is to go as close to the files that you want on the USB stick as you can. So drill in and get the Atari 2600 folder, not the folder that you uncompressed. Take that and copy it, then take that folder and move it over to ROMs. So what you'll have on the root of your USB stick is the root directory, a ROMs folder, and the Atari 2600 folder. And all of the other consoles and systems you want to represent here 
will be straight up listed in the ROMs folder. It's a very clean way to do it and it's gonna help you tremendously when you go to put it on the TV. Just to make sure you got what you expected on your USB drive, go ahead and drill into the ROMs folder and the Atari 2600 folder. If you look here, you'll see all those games have been copied over, but don't uncompress them. You do not need to extract these files. RetroArch will read them straight up as compressed volumes. Don't worry about it. At this point, you can go ahead and eject your USB drive safely because you are done copying stuff. Now remove the USB drive and head over to your TV. Before you put the USB stick in, you're going to need something to let the TV be able to read the file structure on the USB stick. Use your TV's remote control to navigate to search. What I'm going to recommend is using ES File Explorer. So just go to the search bar, type in ES, and you'll see ES File Explorer here. Select it with your TV's remote control and download it to your TV. With ES File Explorer downloaded, just go back to the home menu first. There's a setting that you need to change in order to run some of this stuff, especially the RetroArch APK. So go to Settings, then scroll all the way over, until you get to Devices and Software. Scroll down until you get to Developer Options. and turn on apps from unknown sources. This will let you run code by sideloading it from a USB. Take a moment to read this and then turn it on. And go back to the home menu. Once you're back home, grab that USB stick you put together and insert it into the TV. Give the TV just a moment to go ahead and load up the USB and read the file structure. Go ahead and fire off ES File Explorer. First thing it will ask you is for permission to access the file structure. Tell it yes. First cracker out of the barrel before you use the software is going to ask you to subscribe to a trial free for seven days. No problem. I'm going to show you how to cancel the trial if you don't want to use it. So don't sweat it. Just go ahead and accept the trial so that you can load RetroArch onto your Fire TV. But sorry, you don't get to see my Amazon password. Okay, now that you're subscribed, just tell it no, you don't need to worry about parental controls. And we'll move on. It'll confirm your subscription, but again, don't worry. I'll show you how to cancel. From the main menu, you'll see several choices here. What you want to do is use your TV remote control and slide over to where it says SD card. Yes, I know it's a USB stick, but the software says SD. This is where you're going to see the directories you created, along with some new ones the TV installed from the OS. You want to go to APK. That is where RetroArch.APK is, and that is the installer package that will install RetroArch on your TV. So go ahead and navigate to it and use your TV remote control to select it. You get three choices here. Come down with your TV remote control over to the right to get to install. Go down with your TV remote over to the right to get to install one more time. This will fire off the APK installer. This part goes pretty quick actually. And it's done. Go back to the TV's home menu. Now you can launch RetroArch for the first time. Use your TV remote to come down to your apps and channels. Go all the way over to the right to the newest app, RetroArch, with the Space Invader. And launch it with the TV remote.
The first time you launch RetroArch, you'll have to give it permission to access files. So tell it OK. And allow. When RetroArch starts for the first time, it'll do some housekeeping. Just let it do its thing for a moment. And you have officially launched RetroArch on your TV for the first time. There is a lot of great stuff to see in RetroArch and lots of settings you can play around with to really customize it to your liking. But let's stay on track and get those games loaded up. RetroArch has to have the software installed into it for the particular console that you want to emulate. So go to Load Core, Download a Core. In this case, looking for a core for Atari 2600, and I'll just use the well-established Atari 2600 Stella. Click it with your TV remote, and it will install the core into RetroArch. Come over to the right where the plus is, import content, scan directory. You'll need to come down to the part that says storage. Then pick this alphanumeric directory right here. And what you should see after that is you should see the stuff that you installed, APK, ROMs, and the stuff that the operating system wrote on there for folders as well. Go into ROMs. Then go into the directory of the ROMs you want to load, in this case Atari 2600, and scan directory. As you can see in the bottom left corner, it'll start scanning them right away. The actual scanning process here took 25 minutes, but I'll spare you having to watch it all, and we'll fast forward right through it. Go back to the main menu. There's something different here. It's an Atari joystick. That's right, you've got all those games installed and ready to go in RetroArch. There are a few things I would recommend that you do just to add value to your RetroArch experience. Let's go over them now before you get fired up in the games. Go to the main menu, then come down to Online Updater. Choose Playlist Thumbnail Updater. This is going to add the box art to the majority of the Atari games you have loaded up and just make the whole menu experience much more enjoyable. It appears though that these files get installed on the TV's internal memory, so just make sure you save some room for cores and other content. Once the download's complete, go back over to the Games tab and go to Atari. What you'll notice as you start to scroll through the games is that many of the games now have box art. This really gives the front end a much more polished feel. Not all of the games are going to have box art, but many of them do, especially the main ones. So go ahead and fire up your first game. Why not Pac-Man? Word around the campfire is they actually made more copies of Pac-Man than they ever did Atari 2600 systems. So go in, run it, it'll want to know which core you want to use, and it will assign it to it. So at that point, just run. And there it is. You can use your TV remote to actually act as select, start, even controls for left, right, up, down, and maybe even the action button. But there's a whole lot better way to go about that, and that's with a dedicated controller. I'm going to show you how to set it up now. Go back to your TV's home menu. From here, you'll need to adjust one of the settings in order to get your Bluetooth controller connected. So scroll over to settings, come down with the remote, and go over to the right to devices. From here, come down to game controllers. Then select add new game controller. That will initiate the Bluetooth search on the TV side. Then you'll just need to turn on the Bluetooth on your controller to pair them up. There it is, Steel Series. Select that controller and it will pair up with your TV. From here, you'll be able to control your Fire TV and RetroArch with your Bluetooth controller. Awesome! So go back into RetroArch and test it out. And here you go, the Bluetooth controller is working great. 
So this just really skims the surface of how much goodness is in RetroArch. There are tons of settings that you can tweak to your likeness. Before this ends, I promised you I would show you how to cancel that $9.99 a month subscription for ES File Manager, and I'm going to show you how. You need to go to your web browser and go to this web address, www.amazon.com slash app store subscriptions. It is the only place I've found that you can actually cancel a subscription that you have purchased on the app store. So go in here and if you look, you'll see that ES file manager right here on the page. Just go over to the far right, pick the drop down and you can cancel your subscription right there. Now of course it'll ask you if you really, really want to cancel it. Yes I do, $9.99 a month or $120 a year. Just to push a file around once in a while is too much. And remember, you don't need to have the ES File Explorer in order to load more games and emulators. All you need to do at this point is just download the no intro ROMs, put them on the USB, bring the USB back over to the TV, then you can scan the directories and load the cores that you need. And you'll be all set. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it added value to your gaming experiences, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Don't forget to like and comment, and subscribe so you don't miss all of the new upcoming original content coming your way soon. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.